Ime Mi Zewi for the Jerusalem Connection Red Alert for September 23rd. Why is the EU such a stick in the mud and who else is covered in dirt? Serbia and Kosovo have agreed, thanks to the Trump administration's brokering, to seek a peace with each other and recognize Israel. Serbia will move its embassy to Jerusalem and Kosovo will establish one in Jerusalem as well. This peace between Serbia and Kosovo is over 20 years in the making and something the EU has tried to do this entire time. And now the EU, the European Union, is upset. They don't like the Israel component. They believe it undermines the EU's commitment to the two-state solution, but does it? Or is it just the public foot stomping that Israel has some, had some good press? And in Denmark, the legislature introduced a bill about two months ago to ban non-medically necessary circumcision for children under 18, noting that it's a form of child abuse. So this is clearly a target to the Jewish community in Denmark. However, it's vital to note that this is a practice also within the Muslim community. Denmark's Prime Minister Fredriksen opposes the bill that seeks to ban these circumcision practices. She noted, quote, Danish Jews must c continue to be a part of Denmark. Benjamin Netanyahu thanked Fredriksen on opposing the bill according to a statement released from his office just recently. Quote, Prime Minister Netanyahu noted that this was a matter of maintaining Jewish identity through the generations and that he appreciates how the Danish people protected the Jewish community during and after the Holocaust. So the PM of Denmark is a hero, and it's the legislature, I'd say, with the ones who have mud on their face. In a Newsweek opinion piece earlier this month titled College Administrators Must Address Anti-Semitism on Their Campuses, Laurie Reagan and Asaf Romirovsky, who are scholars for, the Middle, e for Middle East Peace, um, noted in their article that colleges and universities throughout North America have expanded immense, expended immense resources, in particular over the past few months, addressing various claims of systemic racism on their campuses, within American culture and institutions, and more broadly in other areas. Yet other minority groups face discrimination and they largely go ignored. With millions of dollars in initiatives to hire diversity officers, develop required curriculum, demanding equality and inclusion, expand bulging bureaucracies, all to meet the demands of Black Lives Matter organizations. But universities seem to be solely focused on their black students at the expense of all the other members of their campus communities. We, Reagan and Rimorowski, believe, however, that all minorities matter. The sad reality is that I've reported on this for at least 10 years now, how the Jewish students across the United States have been facing a growing, ugly, and violent, anti-Semitic, hostile nature and attacks that have gone unabated and often ignored by college administrators. The AMCHA initiative reported on anti-Semitism in 2019, documenting, quote, an increasing disturbing trends they anticipate continuing and growing worse in the coming year. Here's some statistics to pack it up. Back it up. Academic boycotts and other anti-Israeli activities have been directly linked to a 67% increase in acts involving public shaming, vilifying, or defaming of students or staff because of their perceived association with Israel. A 69% increase in, quote, acts involving shutting down or impeding Israel-related speech, movement, or assembly. And a 51% increase in attack acts involving unfair treatment or exclusion of students because of their perceived association with Israel. So colleges and their administrators and their student groups must start to realize that to be academically and intellectually honest about fighting racism and prejudice and discrimination, they must look at the whole sordid picture. One more example of this issue on college campuses was noted in campus, on Campus Watch's Met website in an article dated September 8th, originally posted by JNS. This was titled, Mesa Defense Canceling Supporters of Israel at USC by Winfield Myers. Winfield notes that the Middle East Studies Association, MESA, the largest academic organization in the field, has a long and uh, unglorious record of defending apologists for Palestinian terrorism and BDS advocacy, even as it opposes efforts to stem the rise of anti-Semitism on college campuses. Its anti-Israel bias is evident, but it's the latest effort to whitewash anti-Semitism at the University of California that stands out for its cynicism and ultimate deceitfulness. 
This letter was signed by, signed by MESA President Dina Corey of George Washington University and Academic Freedom Chair Zachary Lockman of New York University. Their letter attacks the USC President Carol Folt for her August 6th message to the USC community. That was in response to the August 5th recognition, resignation of USC student Vice President Rose Rich a rising senior who was subjected to what she and Folk characterized as anti-Semitic smears on her character triggered by her pro-Zionist beliefs. I reported on Rose's resignation only a few weeks ago. President Folt's opening sentence stated clearly, quote, As you may know, our Vice President of Undergraduate Student Government, Rose Rich, resigned yesterday from her position in the student government. In her heartbreaking resignation letter, Rose described the intense pressure and toxic conditions that led to her decision, specifically the anti-Semitic attacks on her character and the online harassment she endured because of her Jewish and Zionist identities. Rose Rich's own resignation letter details her experience, quote, because I also openly identify as a Zionist, a supporter of Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state, I have been accused by a group of students of being unsuitable as a student leader. I have been told that my support for Israel has made me complicit in racism and that I, by association, am a racist. Over the summer, students launched an aggressive social media campaign to impeach my Zionist in the resignation, she also wrote, it is only uh, the only sustainable choice I can make to protect my physical safety on my campus and my mental health was resignation. Rich also wrote a letter to Newsweek. Let's be clear, this is anti-Semitism. Nearly 96% of all American Jews support Israel as a Jewish state. Inherently, this is connected to our religious history and communal peoplehood. An attack on my Zionist identity is an attack on my Jewish identity. The suggestion that my support for a Jewish homeland would make me unfit for office or would justify my impeachment plays into the oldest, most wretched stereotypes of Jews, accusations of dual loyalty and holding all Jews responsible for the actions of the Israeli government. Kahuri and Lachman of Mesa, speaking for the largest academic association for Middle East studies, omitted the heart of this entire sordid tale and twisted the university president's words in their quest to delegitimize Israel and its supporters by stigmatizing them as threats to academic freedom. In practice, as Rich's cancellation demonstrates, Mesa's lies seek to legitimize anti-Semitism, stigmatize Zionism as a form of bigotry, and declare open season on pro-Israel students. Scholars who respect truth and value common decency should turn their backs on this disgraced organization. So these academic powerhouses, Corey and Lachman of George Washington and New York Universities, get the stick in the mud award of the week. To me, they are covered in the dirt of anti-Semitism. Shavua Tov. Have a great week.